while driving intelligence. I've got the nasty service engine soon light. I haven't had any problems with this truck for tens of thousands of miles. I'm gonna use my blue driver and figure out what is the problem. finished diagnostics and I came up with a P0401 EGR A flow insufficient detected but I also got a couple other codes and the other one that's interesting here is zero uh, excuse me U1262 which is in a data link fault and when I look at this one it, it looks like some of the solutions had to do with the DPFE sensor right here which is part of the EGR circuit so I'm gonna start with my EGR feedback issue. I'm going to see if I can resolve that and maybe that will uh, resolve this other communication issue at the same time. Now that I've run my diagnostics, I know I've got a P0401 and a U1262, which is the communication issue. When I used the blue driver information that was available to me on my phone, it showed me that one of the potential issues with the communication is a bad DPFE sensor. That some people out there had replaced the DPFE sensor to resolve the communication issue. I was, I'm going forward with that assumption and the rest of my repairs to focus on the EGR circuit and once I fix that to see if that resolves the communication issue. What I needed to do was get a diagram. I understand basic operation of the EGR but I wanted a detailed understanding so the next uh, slide is going to show you the EGR circuit and that's going to give me the basis from which I'm going to do further testing. This is an important tool for the rest of my diagnostics. It's an EGR circuit diagram that's used on many Ford vehicles. You see the EGR in the middle of the diagram, and that's controlled by the vacuum regulator, which is in turn controlled by the PCM. The PCM uses the DPFE sensor and other inputs to control operation of the EGR. In order to get to that DPFE or the EGR circuit, it's underneath this cover, so I have to take the plastic cover off first. Incidentally, it's been about a year I cleaned my EGR passages out and I had replaced my EGR valve so I, I, there's a high probability that's not my problem. I'm going to go ahead and check those anyway but I'm going to pull this off and uh, do the, the first check will be my EGR and, uh, and then I'll also check and see if the passages are blocked. Now that I've got everything exposed you can see the EGR. Here's the vacuum line going to the EGR. Here are the differential pressure tubes going up to the DPFE sensor. And this is the, uh, the monitoring system for this sensor. It goes back to the, uh, the computer, engine computer. This is the, uh, what the computer controls to release vacuum to the EGR. Given that I've got a differential pressure sensor issue, it's either the module, I'm thinking, or I've got a leak in one of these tubes, or I've got blockage once again in the upper, th upper uh, intake. So. Uh, what I'm going to do first is just test the EGR to see if the EGR is operating properly. I'm going to put some vacuum on that and uh, if it holds vacuum then the next thing I'm going to do is check the ports going into the upper intake and we'll go on from there. My first test is going to be disconnecting this vacuum line. I'm going to hook up a vacuum here and see if the, uh, the EGR is holding that vacuum. If that's okay then I'm going to start the engine, pull vacuum, and see if that causes the engine to stumble. If that's the case, then everything on this side is in good condition. Vacuum gauge is hooked up. Let's pull some vacuum and see what happens. So this thing is pulling vacuum. The EGR is holding that vacuum, which indicates that this is not the problem. Engine's running. I'm going to pull some vacuum on the EGR. If the EGR is good and the passages going into the intake are good, then the engine should stumble and that'll give me a good indication of where my problem is. You should hear that, the engine is having a problem, so that indicates that my passages in the EGR are good. And once I release the vacuum, the engine went back to normal. With that test complete, I've isolated this to a couple potential issues. It could be this solenoid here that's opening up the vacuum to the uh, EGR, but I doubt that's it. It's probably something to do with the DPFE sensor, the tubes, uh, these could be plugged, or it could be communication with the ECU, and I'm hoping that's not the problem. My next test is going to involve the vacuum regulator, which I refer to as the EGR solenoid. 
you see here that it's got uh, power on one side and then it's got a ground going to the PCM on the other. I'm gonna check those connections. As an additional check, I wanna check this EGR solenoid to see if I've got voltage to it and also a voltage return. I should have 12 volts on each side of that. I got the key in the ignition on. I'm touching that and I'm getting about 12 volts, so that's good. I've already tested the other side of this, so I'm also getting 12 volts, which gives me an indication that this does use the computer to ground out this solenoid to allow vacuum to go to the EGR. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this circuit with the engine running to make sure that this circuit and this solenoid are still working properly. The main thing you need to do is to make sure you know which side is the supply voltage and on this vehicle I've checked and that uh, it looks like red with yellow is the supply side. This other side does not show voltage now that I've unplugged this so there's no voltage going through the, uh, the EGR solenoid but I'm just going to check that one more time just to make sure that that is zero voltage and then I can ground that out with the engine running to see if I can simulate uh, the EGR opening. No, 23.8 millivolts, there's no voltage there. So that is the, the ground side that goes to the computer. I'm gonna plug it back in and ground that as the engine's running. And I'm gonna use a test light to reduce the amount of voltage that, uh, that would go to the computer just to make sure there's no back feeds or causes any problems with blowing out my ECU. All right, so the engine's running now. As I indicated, I'm gonna ground this, which simulates the computer activating the solenoid. And if it does that, the engine should stumble with the EGR opening. And you can see that that's exactly what it's doing. So that circuit is very good, no problem. And it returns back to normal. So I know now for sure that the EGR solenoid is in good condition. I know that the EGR and the passages are in good condition. The only thing remaining is to test whether or not I've got a proper signal coming from that uh, DPFE sensor. Referring once again to this diagram, I'm going to test the DPFE sensor. You can see the two tubes that go to the EGR tube, and then there are three lines going to the PCM. What I want to test is if there's voltage coming from the PCM, and I also want to test the, uh, the signal return voltage. Now electrically, the last thing I want to check is the DPFE sensor, so I'm going to back probe this connector. So I'll take a pin and pin inside each of these. There should be a reference voltage that is uh, about five volts for two of these winds and um, a return voltage of, I think it's from 0 0.8 to 1.2 volts. That's what I just found online. So I'm gonna check to see if that uh, is, are the readings that I get. And if that's the case, then it turns out that this is the problem with my, my truck. The, points, the P0401 is the DPFE sensor itself. I need to order a new one and replace it. Okay, so I've got the key on and I've back probed. It turns out that the center line going into this DPFE sensor is the uh, return voltage. The, uh, the outer two, there's three lines here, are five volts. I've already checked those. The five volts is accurate and uh, appropriate. I'm checking the voltage on the sensor now and it's 17.6 millivolts which is not appropriate. It should be 0 0.8 to 1.2 volts as I've uh, found out online. So uh, it looks like my DPFE sensor is bad and I need to order a new one. So given all these tests, I feel reasonably confident that the EGR system mechanically is good. Uh, I've got a good uh, EGR solenoid, good EGR, good passages, good connection down here to the uh, EGR tube but I have tested the DPFE sensor and it turns out that that is the problem and I need to get a new DPFE sensor for this truck. I received my Amazon sourced DPFE sensor after a couple days, Amazon Prime, and I'm going to install this now and resolve the DPFE conflict. I've removed the old DPFE sensor. Um, they're absolutely identical because I, got, I bought a Motocraft and I'll link below the Motocraft unit that I bought for my 2002 F-150 with the 5.4. They're probably similar for most, uh, most Fords that use a DPFE sensor. Anyway, um, the new one's installed. You can see it right there. And now I'm going to start the vehicle up and see if this resolved uh, two codes, P0401 the DPFE sensor code, and also the communication code. I uh, don't recall offhand the number, 
but uh, I'm believing because the uh, the return voltage was, was zero, that the uh, sensor had completely failed. That's why there was no communication back to the ECU, and that's why it's recording as a communication issue. So let's see what we come up with. Oddly enough, my uh, check engine light has gone out even without resetting the codes. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I hope that's because the new DPFE sensor is in there. I'm going to run codes again and, uh, and make sure that that uh, resolves my issue. I finished running the diagnostics and I've still got the same codes. Uh, U1262, which is a data link fault, and P0401. But I, as I think I've mentioned already, the P0401, which is the, uh, the bad DPFE sensor, is what's driving this communication fault because there was no response from the DPFE sensor. So I'm going to clear codes and see if that resolves my issue. All codes have been cleared. Now I'm going to go back and read codes once again. All right, so I re-ran codes. My communication fault is gone. The uh, actually the generic body code module is gone, and uh, the P0401 is gone. So I've resolved all those codes. I'm sure two of them were related to each other: the communication code and the, uh, the DPFE sensor. The other one I cleared and it may come back. Uh, I've still got to do some investigation into that. But uh, I hope this video helps you because it did resolve my issue with the DPFE sensor, but I did some thorough testing to make sure that I knew what I was buying. Uh, motorcraft parts are not cheap, so it's best to do a good test in order to make sure that you're buying the right parts. You're not chasing problems with parts, which can be extremely expensive. And uh, I've got a good running vehicle again. Well, I was running good anyway. But, I resolved a, uh, a conflict. If you like this video, please give me that thumbs up, subscribe below, leave comments below, and I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.